Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio this morning. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm going to be speaking this morning with Dr. Aklog. He's here with us from PavMed. He's CEO, Dr. Lishan Aklog, and he's joining us on Health Professional Radio this morning to talk about PavMed's ESOGARD. It's a non-invasive esophageal DNA test and ESOCHECK. It's also a non-invasive cell collection device for the detection of Barrett's esophagus, which is a little-known precursor to esophageal esophageal cancer. Uh, welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Aglog. Good morning, Neil. Thank you. Uh, give our listeners a bit of background about yourself and then tell us what PavMed is all about as a company. Sure. Um, so I spent my career as a, a cardiac surgeon uh, doing open heart surgery, and I transitioned to a career in medical device entrepreneurship a little close to um, uh, 10, 12 years ago. And I've um, had some uh, prior businesses where we developed medical devices to address unmet needs. And then I founded um, PavMed, which is a um, multi-product medical device company founded in 2014. We went public on NASDAQ in 2016. And we have uh, a multitude of products across uh, three different verticals <clears throat> that are in various stages of development and, and commercialization. So now these products, uh, ESOGARD, ESOCHECK, these are your two lead products, right? Correct. So those those two are within our GI health vertical, and those are two of the most the furthest along. Uh, they are both they're they they are um, uh, offered together as a, um, a commercial products right now. And as you said, they address a very important prevalent condition, uh, which is the diagnosis of of Barrett's esophagus, which is a precursor to very deadly esophageal cancer. Now, Barrett's esophagus, exactly what is that and how does it herald more trouble? Sure. So it's, 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 it's useful to start to its, its precursor, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, G-E-R-D, which is also commonly known as chronic heartburn or chronic reflux. And uh, that's a very, pro- a very common problem. It affects tens of millions of people in the United States. Um, uh, many, uh, many of whom, most of whom get it at least once a week. Uh, so that condition happens when acid in the stomach and other substances get into the lower part of your esophagus, which is your food tube, and it irritates the lining of the esophagus, which is what causes the pain. Uh, that can be treated with antacids or drugs like Prilosec and Nexium. Mm-hmm. But over time, that exposure can transform the lining of the esophagus uh, into a condition called Barrett's esophagus. Now, Barrett's esophagus is benign. It's not a malignant condition, uh, but it's a telltale sign. It's a warning sign of so, you know, canary in the, in, the, in the coal mine that tells you that a process has begun that can lead to cancerous changes, initially uh, stages called dysplasia, and then ultimately esophageal cancer, which is a very, very deadly condition with uh, uh, 80 to 85 percent, only an 80 to 80, 80 to 85 percent mortality rate over five years. It's one of the deadliest cancers. It's also one of the fastest growing cancers. It's grown sixfold in the last few decades. Now, you say that this is a precursor, something that says the process has started that may develop into esophageal uh, esophageal cancer. Uh, does age or time of diagnosis play a part? Or if it's diagnosed, say, in someone in their 20s, is it something that may or may not turn into cancer? Sure. So the, the risk of, uh, of, of Barrett's esophagus evolving to cancer is really uh, a, a, a certain percentage every year. So not everybody who gets Barrett's esophagus develops um, cancer, uh, but it, it's a cumulative risk over time. The population that's really most affected are not 20-year-olds, but, um, but pay, pay people in middle age and elder, elderly patients. So the, the cutoff for risk is typically around 50. So at white, and there are also other, other factors, other demogra- demographic factors that contribute to the development of uh, Barrett's esophagus and esophageal cancer. So the typical uh, person is a white male uh, over 50. Um, those three those three criteria alone in the in the context of chronic heartburn puts you at significant uh, risk for developing Barrett's esophagus and also risk of, of, of that advancing to esophageal cancer. So how do these products affect the quality of care when it comes to these issues? Yeah, so that, that's a great point. So th- what, what we have here is we have a spectrum of conditions that start with acid reflux, evolve to a benign condition, Barrett's esophagus, 
intermittent conditions where you're starting to head towards cancer called dysplasia and then the actual cancer itself. So with cancers, the goal is early detection but to prevent progression of the cancer to the more deadly states when things are too late. And th what these products do is it allows uh, physicians to screen patients to identify Barrett's esophagus, this precursor, before it evolves into the more advanced conditions. And it allows you to do so much more simply and much less invasively. Right now, the standard of care is an, is an endoscopy, where upper endoscopy, where a patient has to come in, someone else has to take off work, and you basically spend a day getting a, an invasive um, diagnostic procedure mm -hmm. that requires intravenous anesthesia. This can be done in a two to three minute office procedure. It's a swallowable device. Uh, a sample is collected, uh, sent to a laboratory for DNA testing, and you get a result as to whether you have uh, um, Barrett's or one of the more advanced conditions. So it really has the opportunity to increase uh, the screening rates, which right now are very low. Only about 10% of patients who are indicated for screening by professional guidelines actually get screened. So the goal of this technology is to increase that screening rate from 10% to something significantly higher. And even modest increases from 10 to 20 or 25% will save thousands of lives uh, from uh, esophageal cancer. What's the turnaround rate on results uh, after ESOCHEC? So there's really not, it is not an urgent uh, situation where you need to act immediately. It's really mm -hmm. telling you what your risk is over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, um, this, this product has, has been introduced only as recently as December of last year. So we're, we run the test um, with a turnaround period of about three weeks. Over time, as more, as more tests are done, they'll be batched more, more they'll be batched together where we'll be able to cut that down to you know, on the order of five to seven days. Now, what about uh, availability and um, coverage as far as um, Medicare, Medicaid? Sure. So uh, the, the product is, is commercially available, both the, the diagnostic assay, ESOGARD, and the device, uh, the sampling device, ESOCHECK. Um, uh, so they are currently commercially available today. Um, we are in the process, in the late stages actually, of uh, working through the CMS reimbursement process for diagnostic assays, and we expect to get... Um, to get a formal uh, pricing and um, reimbursement codes. Uh, we, have, we actually have a code. We're looking to get reimbursement and coverage decisions, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. In the interim, uh, the procedure can still be performed, and doctors are performing it and, and submitting and submitting uh, on an indiv indiv individualized basis to, both, um, uh, to, to all payers. Okay. Now, as far as PavMed uh, as a whole going forward, where do you see... Uh you know, with the future, what's next for PavMed and uh, why should we be paying attention to your company right now? <laughs> yeah, so um, this is, these are really exciting times for us. We transitioned from a development stage company in our first several years to a commercial stage company. So in addition to EsoGuard and EsoCheck, we just recently received 510 K clearance, FDA clearance for a uh, novel innovative, uh, minimally invasive device to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. And we have many, many other products in the, in the pipeline that are working their way through development and regulatory and ultimately commercialization. So I would encourage people to keep an eye on us as we have a lot of uh, very exciting um, products along, coming through and already on the market that uh, we believe have uh, both significant clinical impact in addressing unmet needs and transforming healthcare um, in, in multiple different uh, clinical conditions and across different specialties, but also that are going to create significant values for um, for our shareholders. Where can we learn more about PavMed? So you can uh, the, um, contact, you can go to our website, which is www.pavmed.com, uh, or contact us directly at info at pavmed.com. Thank you, Dr. Aglock, for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Uh, thank you, Neil. It's been a real pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.